or the med. Hey guys, how is everybody doing? Um, I'm trying out the new uh, YouTube webcam feature because they don't have the um, actual live thing that they used to have before. So if there are any issues um, with hearing me or seeing me or uh, typing in your chat, uh, let me know. Also, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to get some water. And yes, I do have to hop on and hop off of my chair. It's a high chair, damn it. I'm not that short. <laughs> hey, Eugenia. Nice to see you as always. Um, whoever is logging into the live, please say hi and um, let me know where you guys are from. I'm always curious to see where people are logging in from. And I'm wondering, Eugenio, if you ended up getting your uh, your dinner group to actually join the chat. <laughs> All right, let's see. So who's here? I see some people in Marco. Hi, Marco. Where are you from? Say that. <laughs> All right, um, also for everyone who's joining, um, especially for the actual live chat and whoever's watching the replay. Ah, Marco, yeah, you made it. Nice to see you. <laughs> Again, you see, I didn't know which Marco, if you had come in, commented at some point, but now, now I remember. Um, but yeah, for anyone who is joining the live, there is a slight lag um, between when I say something, when you guys hear it, when you actually answer in the chat and um, when I see that. So if there's a little delay or if I answer your question a little bit later, that is why. Um, okay, so first of all, I would like to say thank you to all of you who have been um, sharing and uh, joining these live sessions. And also more importantly, I very much appreciate the, the comments and the questions because that's really where it boils down to. I mean, you know, when it comes to um, issues like bad leads or bad follows uh, or anything like that, I have my own opinion on it, but it's not really about just me. It's about what is the, the conversation in the community and how do we improve that dialogue? And so without your actual comments, without your feedback, without your suggestions and your questions, um, it's just me in on my island, right? So um, I want to say I really do appreciate that. I know when I first did the lives, um, people had a little bit of a difficulty in terms of like actually commenting or what to say. And uh, this last one on bad follows, or today's uh, one on bad follows, actually got a lot of responses. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for that. Um, a couple of housekeeping things before we get into the actual topic. Um, one is there's something really important about these lives that I would like from you guys, which is I want to know what it means to you uh, to actually hear this, this, these comments, hear these questions um, answered and these issues addressed. Uh, so in the description, there is a link to a feedback form. If you don't mind just um, scrolling down, right click that link and open it in a new tab or window. Um, so that when this live is finished, you can um, send me your feedback because the whole purpose of this is to find out uh, if it actually means something to you guys. And that's one way for me to get that feedback from you. Um, second housekeeping item is uh, one of the easiest ways to show your appreciation and show your support, especially for things like this, which are on social media, is to um, share them and to subscribe. So if you haven't already, Please do that as well. That way you'll know when the uh, when the next uh, topic comes up as well. And um, you can stay up to date with all that stuff. And then the third thing is, um, what is the other one? Right. Make sure um, you guys actually participate in the chat as well. I have a couple of things that I want to talk about, which is primarily based on the um, feedback and the, the questions that I got when I posted about this live. But um, whoever is joining now, Marco, for example, um, I know you didn't comment before, but if you have questions um, as I'm speaking, please add them to the chat. 
Um, and if you're watching this as a replay, add them to the comments because if I can't get to your question in this 30 minute session, which always somehow ends up being a lot longer, um, if I can't get to your question in this session, um, I would try to get to it at a later point. And if not me, maybe there's someone who's actually watching the replay and is able to uh, address your, well, your question or your comment themselves. So putting it out there is one of the best ways to actually, uh, one, solidify your own understanding, solidify uh, you know, or clarify what it is you're struggling with or what you would like answered, but also provides um, not just me, but provides other people in the community to have an opportunity to address them. Community, all those words with the it, 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 it gets a uh, tongue twister. Um, and lastly, and then I'm going to get into it, I promise. Um, <laughs> lastly, I kind of made a little mistake. And actually, I was talking about this with Marco last night at The Social in New Jersey. Um, when I posed the question on bad leads, the live session on bad leads, which if you haven't seen, there's an additional resources section in the description that you guys can go and click and watch that, which is also a pretty good one. Uh, but when I posed a question to kind of field uh, the the comments on that topic, I guess the way I had posed it, I got not only obviously, unsurprisingly, the, the complaints from the followers about leads being rough and whatnot, but I actually got a lot of um, very personal and, um, hi David, <laughs> very personal and um, revealing comments from the leads themselves. And this time, I apologize, it's my fault. I should have uh, done a better job with my, my questions. This time when I talked about bad follows, I did ask the leads, what are their issues? What are their most common issues with a bad follow? What constitutes a bad follow? Um, and then to the follows, I said, what are your struggles as a follow? And so that kind of turned to, you know, finger pointing at the leads. Well, I have this issue with this lead and that lead. And what I really wanted to um, ask, and so I'm gonna ask it now in this live uh, and the replay. And if you're in this actual chat as a follow, please take a moment to just think about this question, ponder it, and if you if you can, um, you know, pose that into the, the comments. Or if you want um, to ask me a question or comment or something in private, uh, you can always reach out to me on my social media, on Facebook or Instagram or in the description of the feedback form, there's also a section where you can um, add a little bit more information or questions. So you can do that as well. But this is the question I really have for my follows, which is what do you think you do that might contribute to a bad connection? Um, and the reason I ask this is because it's very easy for us as dancers, dancers to sit there and point at other people and say, well, you know, this didn't work out because he was rough or this didn't work out because she was super heavy. Right. But we don't always put that focus on ourselves. However, I did find a lot of leads um, kind of apologizing for the follows even with this topic. Uh, and and saying, well, there's no bad follows, and usually I try to adjust, so they're not even making it about the follow. Yet, when it came to the bad leads topic, it was very easy for a lot of the followers to just go through a list of items that they did not like or that they didn't appreciate or enjoy. Um, and this might just be the, the culture of the dance, um, the history of the dance where... Uh, the lead has a responsibility for the dance, you know, to, to for the most part in terms of um, executing patterns and, and guiding the follow. And so I, I sometimes wonder if because of uh, the way the roles are have traditionally been defined, if followers don't even um, think they're as responsible as they are or as they can be. Maybe they, they feel like they're not. So I would really appreciate it if you guys could think about it. I mean, even if you don't answer it today, but before you go out dancing, think about what do you do that might contribute to a poor connection? Because it can't always be the other person's fault. <laughs> um, let's see in the chat. David Fishman. When did the last Christmas sign up? Man. Oh, yes, I do remember. I think, David, you put me in touch with somebody else. Or no, your girlfriend sent me a message. Anyways, random. All right. So um, 
back to the chat. If you guys have questions about what I'm about to say, please feel free to um, include them in the chat or add them into the comments. Now, uh, the most common complaints, and there are a few, and sometimes I also find that leads almost didn't want to get into like what was the common stuff. They were trying to find really weird and, and um, not normal things, but it's the common stuff you want to address because if it's that common, then it obviously needs to be addressed and somehow um, solved. So uh, some of the most common complaints and feel free to, as a lead or as a follow, agree and chat, yes, that's an issue of mine or whatever, is um, too much or too little tension being very, couldn't find a place for my water, <laughs> being very um, heavy, anticipating the lead moves, over styling, um, performance styling and energy, I guess performing on the social dance floor, um, doing their own thing and not paying attention, a lack of interest, uh, generally not present, um, looking bored, and not taking responsibility. So uh, I don't know if there's anything else you guys want to add to that, but that's generally the most common stuff that's come up in the comments when I posted this topic. Uh, so I'm not going to be able to get to everything. Again, uh, it is, it's a short live, but I'm going to do my best to address some of the things that I feel are um, some of the most common issues and really should be approached from a mind state point of view. So the first would be the uh, too heavy or too light. So tension. And um, I talked about this in the bad leads live as well, which is you can't, you can't approach this dance um, with this idea of a, a one way suits everybody because we're human and we're always evolving and changing and everybody's different from everyone else. So you can't have a fixed formula for how to interact with everybody. And so um, the problem with tension or what tends to happen is depending on how people are learning and how people are practicing. And this is another uh, issue too, is let's say, for example, you are always going to the same classes um, with the same instructor and the same group of students or if you're on a performance team, so the most of the time that you, most of the time you are spending is um, with the people on the team. So the same faces and, and same people that have learned the same techniques that you have. You are going to find that a certain level of tension works with those people. But once you get on the dance floor, unless you're just dancing with the exact same group of people all the time, you're going to see that it requires adjustment. and. So that's kind of the approach that you need to take when it comes to um, resistance and tension for my follows. Also applies to leads, but today it's not about the leads, okay? Which um, I'd also like to say, uh, me listing out all of those uh, those common complaints and issues is not a bashing session. Um, we already had the leads, which which got their you know their attacks, and we're like, well, when are you going to do one on bad follows? Um, it's not a bashing session. It's just about bringing awareness and bringing light to the things that people complain about but won't necessarily tell you to your face. And so you'll never know. And so this is an option, an opportunity for us, all of us, to hear what is being said, hear what the common complaints are, reflecting a little bit, seeing if we might be guilty of those things ourselves, and then seeing how we can correct that. Okay, so um, for the followers, just saying. <laughs> So going back to um, resistance and tension, you can have a fixed formula. So even if it's working with everyone on your team and everyone in your class, you can't get on the um, dance floor and expect it to work with everybody else. Not only that, but tension also um, is changing. It's constantly changing within the dance, right? If we think about uh, the amount of resistance and tension that you need for a basic, it's not that much. But obviously when it comes to say a, um, a spin or a back break, which requires a little bit more force, obviously you're gonna need more attention. So you can't think about like, all right, this feels like a good amount of tension and I'm gonna maintain this at all times. No, you want to actually be thinking about what 
does the move itself call for? And then adjusting based on that. Is that um, for anyone who's in the chat, especially the followers, does that make sense? Is that something that um, you guys struggle with in terms of having one kind of consistent level of tension? Let me know in the chat. Also, a small little moment to say hello to people. Deuce Boogaloo. I'm pretty certain that's not your name, so I'm just going to say hi, Cleveland. And hi, Re Ruben. <laughs> okay, so, Kevin, yeah, that's it. Um, so in terms of our, our tension, um, one is the, the whole notion that every, every move requires something a little bit different. So what is the solution to this? Knowing that um, there's a constant adjustment that's required, what is the solution? My two steps to this solution would be, one, you've got to know your fundamentals. I know for followers, there's this, um, there's this, this idea that because the lead is generally going to be able to guide the dance, that you just need to know some of the basics um, of how to follow a crossbody lead or something like this. And then the rest of the time, you can focus on learning all the fancy stuff, all the styling. But uh, your fundamentals might not be strong enough. And if they're not strong, which may, which means, do you know what muscles you need to engage? Do you know how much you need to engage a certain muscle or another? That's the only way you're going to be able to create the right amount of tension with a certain partner for a certain move. But if you don't know your fundamentals and you don't know how you're stepping into the ground, how much you're extending, how much you're um, using your fingers, which muscle groups you're using to engage your frame and connect with your partner, you will never be able to get that um, beautiful connection, okay? And it's a, uh, tension is almost like a, I don't know, there's it's like a Goldilocks thing, you know, like something's too hard, too soft and just right. And yeah, maybe what you're doing works and um, it works with the people that you usually dance with. But if you really want to be a good follow, it's not just about the comfort zone. It's about being able to get out of that comfort zone and still be able to execute with anybody and with any move, whether you've um, been led through it or not. So if you are uh, unable to understand your body and your muscles and the engagement, you won't be able to adjust the tension, which means if you have a fixed tension, yes, it will work for certain moves, 100%. But for other moves, it'll probably be too heavy. And for other moves yet, it'll be too light or non-existent. So one um, step in the solution is to focus on your fundamentals. I can never, ever, ever stress that enough. Um, it is only through that understanding that you can actually get your body to do the things that you want it to do. The second step is probably going to solve some of the other um, issues like anticipating uh, or not paying attention is you've got to you've got to be present and you've got to play an active role in the dance uh, being very good let's say we talk about fundamentals uh, and let's say you've mastered your fundamentals you know your body inside out it doesn't mean anything if you're not trying to apply it within that environment of another human being, uh, another partner, uh, another person who's going to be giving you feedback on everything that you are providing to them. So that requires you to actually be um, active and present. And it requires a level of analysis, constant analysis and reaction and action. So for me, for example, in my dance, um, I'm, I'm always paying attention to what's happening. There are times that I can feel I'm heavy. And then I think about like, why was I so heavy? What was I doing? Oh, I took too far of a step back and I could not bring myself with my own body back to where I needed to be. So I pulled on the lead to, to get me back. And that's where I could feel and, and notice in my partner that there was a, uh, uh, a, a certain facial expression that, said, oh, that was a little bit more than I expected it to feel like, right? Based on what the rest of the dances felt like. And so um, 
you have to be able to analyze the moment and then constantly adjust instead of being very passive and saying, okay, you know what, I'm just going to go through uh, the dance and follow the moves. And if I don't execute a move, oh, well, next time or next person or who cares, right? Um, that level of interest and um, active mind state in the dance is what's going to not only improve uh, as a dancer, but also improve your connection with people in general. Um, Dale Carnegie said, uh, to be interesting, be interested. You know, uh, there's a lot of focus on, you know, what can I be doing or all about myself, when in reality, if I put a little bit more effort on focusing on my partner, um, everything starts to become a little bit more interesting. So let me take a look at the comments on this. Ruben said, personally, I think that an experienced leader can identify the level of the follower and modulate the level and trick and make it more comfortable for both. I 100% agree with that. However, this again goes back to the leader taking all the responsibility. And though I agree that the leader should adjust, a follower has the exact same responsibility to adjust. It's not just about saying, well, here, this is how I'm going to dance and you just got to work around me. No, that's not the way a conversation works. You know, even if we're talking about a, a, just a conversation in general, let's say, for example, there's someone who's um, got a, a greater vocabulary, let's say the lead, and there is someone who doesn't know that many words. You're going to have the leader obviously adjust their their words so that they can communicate in a way that's um, effective to get this person to understand. But this person who's trying to understand shouldn't just be sitting there saying, oh, well, you know, I'm fine with cat sits on mat. No, like you want to also aspire to learn a little bit more, to understand the different ways to create a sentence and, and whatnot. So I I'm not a big fan of the, you know, leaders got like 70% of the responsibility. It's a 50, 50 for me. Um, and just paying attention and trying is good enough, even if the execution doesn't work out. And I don't think that, uh, the way things go sometimes that followers have that mentality. And again, Ruben, you're, you're kind of proving that for me here because here I'm talking about a follower getting better at their attention and you're thinking, what can I do to make it better for her? But a follower also needs to be thinking about the same things. What can I do to make it more comfortable for him? Right. Uh, Eugenio, I've always considered anticipation as a signal that the follower isn't relaxed for whatever reason, be it internal reasons or because the follower is uncomfortable. Excellent point. Um, anticipation could be for those reasons where she's not comfortable Anticipation could be where um, usually what I find anticipation comes from is um, either I already know, which is uh, more along the lines of uh, you're not going to lead and I can pretty much lead myself. And two or two rather, um, I want to be really light. You know, the, the, the worst thing that followers get is like she's so heavy you know, nobody wants to dance with her. So a lot of followers want to be very light, but then they mistake being light um, or they, they push it so far that they end up kind of being non-existent, which you, you do the move, but you didn't feel her at all, or she was just a little bit ahead. Um, now, on the note of followers being uncomfortable, uh, yeah, if, you're, if your follower is inexperienced and, and doesn't understand then yeah, you can. Then you're going to feel different levels of tension. You know, um, when we're nervous, we tend to tense up, where our muscles tighten. And so, if you're dancing with a follower who is inexperienced, nervous, concerned, she's dancing with someone who's who's very advanced and is uh, is probably going to end up gripping a little bit more and being a little bit heavier, not because she's trying to, but just because she's nervous. And so, yes, as a lead, what can you do? You can try and make that a more pleasant environment. As a follow, I always say um, there are ways to communicate so that you can set the stage and set the bar without being uncomfortably pushed to it and then drawn back. For leads, if you have followers that are, are very heavy or whatever, yes, you can adjust. If she's still hurting you, then you want to be comfortable enough to communicate that discomfort. 
I think that um, link is in the description as well. If it's not, I'll add it there later. For the followers, however, um, if you're going to dance with someone, let's say that's more advanced, you could always go in and say, hey, you know, um, I'm, I'm not that advanced or, you know, I'm, uh, I, I want to, like, I've seen you dance, you're, you're, you're very fancy or whatever, and I, I want to try this, right? So it, one, preps the lead and will most likely make the leader, let's say, for example, an advanced dancer dancing with another advanced dancer uh, lead might feel like he can be in his own world, right? And with a follower who's not that experienced and he's dancing with her, if he doesn't know that, might feel like he can be in his own world, but really he doesn't understand that she's nervous. He just thinks she's heavy or she doesn't follow up, but she's actually nervous because she's a beginner or, or not that advanced. And so communicating that before the dance, during the dance even, if it so needs to be, sometimes allows a lead to say, oh, I'm so sorry, like, let me take care of you. And then all of a sudden the energy of the dance becomes a little bit more um, social and uh, caring and empathetic. So for the followers, if you if you do feel like you're uh, compared to the lead that you're dancing with, not at the same level and you're nervous, um, you can express that. There's nothing wrong with expressing that. Like, oh, I'm a little bit scared to dance with you. You're so, and the lead might just actually say, hey, don't worry about it. We're gonna have fun. And just that comment alone will sometimes ease your, your nerves and allow you to be lighter and better connected. I hope that addresses uh, kind of what you were saying, Eugenio. Uh, Jess, when you say you feel heavy, how can you identify it internally, like without the leader telling you? Excellent question. Um, one of the ways I would say you can you can feel the tension is usually there is sometimes, depending on the lead, uh, if he's not full of muscles, then you might see a facial expression that communicates wow, like that's really hard to move you. Um, two, usually what I feel is the movement isn't fluid. Like I feel like there's, it might be a split second, but I just feel a lag. Like I feel like I should have moved and I'm still where I am, even if it lasts like nothing. And I've gotten very sensitive to it, which is again, going back to my, my two point uh, solution to it, is uh, one part of it is you really got to pay attention. The more you pay attention, the more sensitive you get to these small little changes in your own body. So when I feel that 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 extra tension and I feel like my muscles tightened up a little bit more than they needed to for me to just move forward, then I realize I might have taken too much of an extension. I waited too long. I pulled too hard. I, I tensed a little bit too much in my fingers and that made me heavy. It might not actually make me heavy to the lead because I reacted quickly, but it's still something that registers with me and I try to make that correction during the dance. Um, one of the easiest ways for follows, when you start feeling like everything is getting com uh, um, uh, complicated and energetic and you're getting all this tension built up, take a breath. <laughs> It's surprising how little we breathe or how poorly we breathe during a dance um, that requires as much exertion as our dance does. When we exercise, we are all about like, okay, and exhale on the contraction and inhale on the release. But when we're dancing, we're just kind of like, <gasps> you know, and before you know it, your, your muscles are all tensed up. So if you do feel, if you notice that for, for a second or you see the expression in your lead, where you feel like you're being heavy, just <sighs> exhale. And it, it often lightens that load. I mean, you guys, whoever's watching at home right now, you guys can do that yourself. Just tense up and then it just kind of lets everything uh, release. So that's one way, Jess. Um, but again, it goes back to self-reflection, focusing on your own body, focusing on what feels different and asking, why does it feel different? Can you make a change so that it doesn't feel like that the next time? And whatever changes you make might work, might not work, right? Or they might work with that person and they might not work with someone else, or they might work with that person today, but not work with them tomorrow. So again, it's uh, the, the main um, lesson here is there's no fixed tension. There's no fixed 
resistance. There's, there's no anything that you can just copy and say, okay, I'm going to memorize this and I'm always going to do this. No, it's not about that. It is about adjusting. And the only way to adjust is to read, is to wait for that moment so that you can adjust. Um, David, I think it's kind of an old fashioned approach to partner dance, the inclination to blame or attribute all things. I think, again, like I said, I think it's a, oh, my connection is unstable. All right, it seemed like I disconnected for a second, but I'm back. Um, I do agree that it's, I think it's a 50-50 relationship. I think the lead, especially when it comes to someone who's not as advanced, will not be able to put the follower through a whole bunch of stuff. We'll probably be putting the follower through not much at all. And then, you know, who are you going to blame for, oh, being rough or something like that? You, you, can, you can contribute to that. And actually going back into tension, just I, I don't want to go focusing back on the leads, but there are many leaders whom I've seen followers speak about and they say, wow, that guy's so rough. He's so so heavy and it's like I almost got hurt, I lost my arm, whatever. And I, um, I like to kind of look at people as challenges, right? So not as a challenge them themselves, but to see how well do I know my own stuff, right? Here I'm talking about fundamentals and reading and adjusting. Can I actually put that into practice? And um, yeah, I can. So if, I'm, if I see someone who's like, oh, that guy's really rough and whatever, I'll dance with him anyways. I'll give him at least one shot, right? And when I dance with him, I put into play all of the other things I understand about my body, about how he's moving, about the physics of movement, about how to diffuse force and tension and energy and, and how to make that dance smooth. And I'm doing that by paying such close attention to every single thing that he's doing. And that dance ends up being really smooth. And then my same friends were like, how did he not break your arm? I was like, actually, that dance was pretty good. Once you understand what's happening, you can start to work with it. And so, yeah, David, I think that it should be less about blaming somebody else and always about the focus on how can you improve um, and, and do things on your own. Uh, Antoinette said, I sometimes deliberately follow badly if I don't like my lead's attitude, which strangely enough coincides with my PMS. So nowadays I'm learning to say no early on to avoid being awful later. Um, that cracked me up. Right. Uh, I think that brings me to another point for followers. Um, if you are actively going to sabotage a dance because um, you don't like the person that asked you or whatever the reason, I always say just sit it out. Um, it is much better. Um, that link is definitely in there, I think. Uh, uh, the importance of saying no. Um, it's much better to give somebody a two second honest no than make them suffer as human beings, the decisions and the choices that we make. Once we make them, commit and commit 100%. And if you can't commit 100%, sit it out. So, yeah. Um, I keep feeling like I'm losing my connection here. I keep saying the connection is unstable. All right, guys, I apologize. I, I keep getting like a little, the connection is unstable. So if I'm cutting out, um, I apologize. I'm trying to shut up when that happens and once I'm back online. I already know the conclusion or exit to. Maybe something from a prior class or a workshop. Excellent point. <clears throat> um, going back to, again, the solution for the proper resistance and tension and not anticipating, you've got to be paying attention because in our dance, many things start the same way and finish a different way. Perfect example would be a right turn. Um, a right turn could also stop halfway and turn into a left turn. And I cannot tell you how many people as a leader, when I'm leading, how many advanced dancers miss the cue because they get this, mo this motion and then immediately commit to a right turn. So that's great. Everything that you know, um, facilitate your connection with another person. You're not supposed to come in to a dance and be like, this is how I'm going to do things. I know that move already. No, you never know where it's going to go. In fact, um, some of the, the coolest moves that have happened between me and my partners in our dances is because we made a mistake, actually. It's because we misread something and ended up somewhere else, and it was a beautiful mistake. So 
um, instead of saying, instead of focusing on this perfect execution, think about uh, how to be better with your reactions. You know, instead of having a fixed reaction, think about how many, uh, think about how curious you can be about what are the possibilities that could happen. Different variations, well, so no one gets complacent thinking they know the move. Ah, the connection. Um, so yes, and this was actually something that I posted, I think one of the last videos I posted, um, about not just teaching techniques. So this takes this whole, um, conversation and brings it a little bit back to the instructors. As instructors, we have a responsibility for not just teaching people, okay, guys, uh, this is a move, you step back, you hold here, and then you pull the girl. We have a responsibility in breaking down like this is not going to be as much resistance and tension as when you're doing a basic step. Or as soon as you come out of this, you need to reduce the tension, both leads and follows. And on top of that, that you want to constantly adapt to your partner who is in front of you as a lead and as a follow. Um, unfortunately, I think most classes uh, are focused more on just filling um, the, the student's mind with as much content as possible and not necessarily the philosophy behind it and the attitude behind learning. Uh, so a little bit more on that, you'll probably get some better results in the dance community. Thank you, Manny. <laughs> uh, Ruben Magnet, as an advanced dancer, do you bring any feedback after a dance to a less experienced dancer or don't consider it necessary? Uh, I do not offer feedback on the dance floor. I generally don't even like being asked about feedback on the dance floor because sometimes then I feel like I'm like teaching and I, I just kind of want to have fun and enjoy that moment without feeling like, okay, I need to be taking notes. Uh, depending on who I'm dancing with and depending on volunteer, I don't like to assume that people are there to me say something to them. You know, I, I think they want to have fun too and they don't want to be lectured. So I'm not there to, to lecture anybody on the dance floor. So um, I don't generally do that. What I do is sometimes I, when I have privates with somebody the night before, I'll make sure that I dance socially with them so that I can, you know, process the dance itself. And then I'll address that in the actual private lesson. Um, as always, as I wish, you know, I had like three things I wanted to talk about today. And I, again, I only got through one thing. Um, tension and resistance is probably one of the most common things for followers. So as a follower, you're most likely not going to be told you're heavy. You know, leaders might talk about it amongst themselves, but there's also this, uh, um, they think they can handle, so they're not even going to make an issue out of it. Even when I've danced with followers who are heavy, I'm not going to go and say something to them later. I just note that they're heavy. And one of the reasons they're often heavy with me is because um, they're used to dancing with leads who tend to be a little bit heavier in return. And so they're used to that extra resistance. They, they do not adjust to me. And I can still lead them and I can move them, but they don't need to give me as much resistance and tension. Um, but I'm not going to say anything to them because... I'm not teaching them, they're not my student. It's not my place to, to say that. So for followers, if you really wanna improve, it's gonna come from taking a step back and looking at yourself and seeing what you're doing. The end of a dance is not just about saying, oh, that was fun, or mm, I didn't really enjoy that, or I don't know what happened, I couldn't really follow those moves. It's about also asking yourself, well, what was I doing differently? What felt differently about dancing with this person than somebody else? And if you are, if you are, incapable or unwilling to ask those questions, whatever attributes you have that make you a bad follow will keep you as a bad follow. If you don't take responsibility for yourself and for what you bring to a partnership, um, you cannot expect to get that much from it. And like I said before, I have danced with all sorts of levels of dancers, rough, heavy leads and all that stuff. And all I do with those moments that other people might complain about is I try to find a solution for it in the dance. And it is possible. I'm telling you it's possible, but it's not possible like this. 
You can't just snap your fingers and say, okay, I'm going to figure it all out. No, it is building up not just the muscles in your body, but the muscles in your mind to start thinking a certain way, to analyze a situation, to quickly react. You know, um, I always say that it's not just about your execution, you know, which is what we are taught and as, as students. We're, we're learning how to execute something perfectly and properly is partially about knowing your body, knowing what it's capable of so that you can react a certain way. But recovery is also about attitude. Do you think you can recover? Do you think you have options? Explore an option that wasn't something that was written down and told to you. And, and this whole mentality behind the dance is as important, if not more important than the, the moves that you're learning. And definitely way more important than the styling that you're learning because that's another topic. That's definitely be another topic. But you've got to focus on the connection with the dance, uh, with your dance partner. It's a partner dance. At the end of the day, if you're not connected to your partner and doing things with each other and for each other, you're basically doing your own thing. Um, and that's not what this dance is about. So that requires a change in attitude first before you can change anything in your body or change anything in the way you learn, the way you absorb information, and then the way you bring it out and contribute that to a partnership. Um, all right, guys. Uh, <laughs> God damn, the time goes by so fast. Um, housekeeping stuff I already said in the beginning, but I will say it again. I will try and do another live. I, I wish I could do them more often, but it just takes a lot of time to set up and prepare and set aside time and make sure that the, the streets are not too busy and there's light in the apartment. Um, and, and my connection is still kind of where, but um, please take a moment to fill out the feedback form. It's in the description below. The other things that I was talking about in terms of bad leads, communicating discomfort, learning when and how to say no, those links are below as well. And um, if you are here today or enjoy the dancing, um, one of the simplest ways to show your support is by subscribing and sharing the video. And of course, comment because it is, it is because of the comments and because of the conversations that I've had that I wanna do these lives, that I wanna have these moments to interact with you guys and talk about these, these topics. Because one, I know not everyone talks about it. And two, not everyone necessarily knows how to talk about it. Some people just complain and then that doesn't sound like a lot of fun either, right? We don't really learn anything except getting a lot of negative energy from somebody. So um, so yeah, subscribe, share, comment. If, you, if there's anything personal that you wanna say to me that you don't wanna put publicly in the chat or in the comment, the feedback form below is a perfect place to do that when you provide your feedback for this uh, session. If you've provided your feedback for previous sessions, please, do it again for this session specifically. Obviously, this is a different topic, so I want to know how this uh, particular discussion went for you. Uh, and managing several time zones too, yes. And uh, I also want to just say a small personal shout out to Eugenio um, from Barcelona, Spain. Uh, I will always appreciate for anyone, including you and, and other people like you, who take the time to constantly support and contribute to the discussion and are always present in these lives and actively participating in the lives. It means a lot to me. I will never find the words to, to really say the things that I wanna say to you, all of you, but um, everything that I'm capable of doing today is partially because of the support that I get from, from all of you dancers out there from people who are just, you know, following and fans. So um, I just want to take that moment to say thank you for taking your time to participate, taking your time to contribute to the discussion and taking your time and your personal words to like share these lives and all of that stuff. So until the next one, um, keep it coming. And I will try and decide based on maybe the feedback forms that I get today, I'll try and decide what the topic of the next live is gonna be. And yes, thank you to everyone who actually did say <laughs> hi here. Hi, Martin, Deuce, Roger. Thank you, Roger. Deuce Bigaloo. What's that, that movie? Is it Deuce? No, Gigolo, right? Deuce Gigolo? Deuce Gigolo. 
Oh my god, I'm I'm screwing this up now. What is that movie now? Crap. Deuce Bigelow. Is that Deuce Gigolo? Roger, you're gonna have to help me with that one. I, I honestly can't remember the movie. Anyways, thank you everyone who joined. Thank you for your Deuce Bigelow, your yes, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you to all of you guys who joined. Excellent questions as always. Um, and anytime I have these, please, uh, if you if you have any personal experiences you don't want to share publicly, by all means, write them in a private message to me because it's those things. Um, and and I just this is the last point I'm going to make. <clears throat> it's those things that allow us to empathize with somebody, right? Like in bad leads or bad falls, we talk about resistance and oh, she's so heavy. But one of the reasons that we create a lot of tension in our body is because of nervousness, right? And instead of me thinking about, oh my God, my follower is so heavy. If I think she might be nervous, you know, she's she's um, scared that she's not gonna do a good job of following me or whatever, all of a sudden it changes my attitude towards the dance. And instead of me complaining or feeling frustrated and, and um annoyed by the tension that she's giving me, I'm going to adjust and adapt and try and create a better energy. So most of those issues are often um, not things that people want to necessarily reveal about themselves, at least not in a public chat or a public comment. So for that reason, if you do have anything like that that you want to share with me, I'm not going to share your name, but at least I can address the issue um, and hopefully create a more empathetic environment in our community. So again, thank you very much, guys. Um, I hope you have a wonderful, I was going to say rest of the weekend, but this is Sunday. So I hope you had a great weekend and I hope this was a nice finish to some of your weekends. I will see you in the next live very, very soon. And don't forget the feedback form. Please, 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 please. And subscribe. Ciao.